So we just showed you how to interpret the position symbol when considering the location of a feature of size. But if most engineers, designers, inspectors, machinists, etc. are all used to seeing coordinate dimensioning and tolerances locate a feature of size, why convert to using the GDT position symbol in the first place? It may seem complicated and unnecessary. So let's compare traditional coordinate dimensioning with position tolerance to see if there's any benefit to using one over the other. Here we have an example of a part that uses rectangular coordinate dimensions with directly applied tolerances. In the simple assembly shown, we can see that the fasteners pass through the assembly channel and thread into the red block. As you can see, the holes in the aluminum channel have a clearance that allow for some deviation of the holes with respect to the threaded hole in the red block. So what tolerance values would be directly applied to these dimensions to guarantee assembly every single time? Well, if we visualize this simple example and allow the hole in the aluminum channel to drift in X until all the clearance is utilized, we see that the maximum deviation we can have before there's an interference with the fastener is four thousandths of an inch. And the same maximum deviation can be found in Y. This creates a rectangular tolerance zone that the axis of the hole must remain within. However, what's wrong with this way of tolerancing? If the hole deviates in its maximum amount in both X and Y, it would pass those individual inspections, meaning we would pass inspection for both of these reported values. But as we see here, if we deviate in both X and Y in their maximum, we would actually end up having an interfering fastener with the assembly in the field. That's not good for anyone involved, and most of us would say that you have to design the part to worst case scenarios. So the solution would be to find the combination of deviations that when both X and Y deviated the most, the part still assembled. With some simple trigonometry and math, we can find that plus or minus three thousandths in X and three thousandths in Y will result in a guaranteed assembly condition, even if both are found to be at their maximum deviation. But does this require quality to reject usable parts? We just saw that if a part deviates in four thousandths in X only, and has no deviation in Y, the part will fit up with no interference. Technically, if this did happen in the real world, we would have to reject these parts due to our tolerances. With coordinate dimensions, we either have to reject good parts or pass bad parts. You have to do one or the other. There's no way around it with coordinate dimensions. So how do we include this deviation in X and Y without including deviations in X and Y that we don't want? That's exactly where GDT control of position comes into effect. In fact, this exact reason is why GDT was invented as a concept. There's no reason round fasteners shouldn't have round tolerance zones. See here in this feature control frame that would allow this hole to have a diametric tolerance zone, thus including the locations we want while excluding the locations we don't want. In fact, if we were to do a simple area calculation of the original rectangular tolerance zone and compare it to the area of the circular tolerance zone, we would find that we in fact have 57% more tolerance. We're allowing all the viable locations to fall within our tolerance zone while blocking out the locations that would fail. So let's assume you have a coordinate dimension print and you know there's extra tolerance being left out like we saw in the previous slides and you want to convert your print to using the position symbol instead of directly applied tolerances like we saw in the rectangular dimensions. The first step is to calculate the equivalent diametric tolerance value. In order to do this, we simply use the Pythagorean theorem to find the circumscribed diametric tolerance. The theorem is as follows. The hypotenuse C is equal to the square root of the sum of the squares of A and B. A is considered the x deviation value, and B is considered the y deviation value. We have to multiply that value by 2 in order to get the total diametric deviation rather than the radial. This value is the tolerance size found in the feature control frame. Let's go ahead and quickly convert this drawing. We see a plus minus tolerance in x of 3 thou and y of 3 thou as well. Some quick calculator work or mental math if you're really good with numbers will give you a total diametric deviation of eight thousandths. Don't forget that our locational tolerance is assigned via the feature control frame, so we need to change those tolerance dimensions to basic dimensions in order to establish true position. And just like that, without adding any additional clearance, 
in location, we have given our quality department 57% more tolerance to work with. Now, as you might have guessed, this formula can also be used to check parts. With the position symbol, our method of inspecting is the same as if we were inspecting coordinate dimensions. We measure the deviation in x and the deviation in y and plug those values into the equation to get our actual diametric deviation. Let's say for this example, the hole actually measures 3 thou away in x and 2 thou away in y. If we plug that into our equation, that comes out to a total of 7 thousandths of actual diametric deviation, which is less than the stated requirement of 8 thousandths, so this feature passes inspection. But don't forget that position is not just a single two-dimensional measurement. Multiple measurements should be taken down the entire depth of this hole to find the worst case scenario in its total diametric deviation. But if all this math sounds like a lot, or maybe you haven't had enough coffee yet and it's early, we have a great chart available for our students to download that makes this much faster. This chart is a tabulated translation of the Pythagorean theorem. There are two tables, one for metric units and one for English units. To convert a drawing, simply look up the maximum x deviation and the maximum y deviation and find the value where the row and the column intersect, and this is the total diametric deviation converted from the coordinate dimension values. This value would be the positional tolerance value found in the feature control frame. Additionally, if you are spot checking a part and want to know if you have met the total diametric deviation requirement for a feature, just measure the part as you would using coordinate dimensions, then look up your actual deviations in x and y to find the actual diametric deviation. Then compare it to the listed value in the feature control frame to check and see if you're passing specifications. Using position over traditionally toleranced coordinate dimensions has many perks, and one of the biggest being the additional 57% more tolerance. However, another bonus is the allowed use of datum feature references. For example, let's look at this imperfect part here. Traditionally, using directly applied tolerance dimensions, a two-point measurement would be used to verify the location is within tolerance. However, if the face on the left has any form error like we see here, and it's not taken into consideration, this part would be rejected and fail because the value is too small. But if you recall, the original assembly, this entire edge, engages the mating part. So the high points of the surface will likely dictate how far away the hole will be from that edge not just the two-point measurement. We see now how this part would assemble with no problem, and we don't need to reject this part. In fact, that's exactly why datum features are so important. They set up a repeatable measurement datum reference frame that mimics the functional intent of the part. Our goal is to be your best source for gd and information online. It's important to us that everyone involved in engineering and manufacturing have the chance to learn and better understand gd and on your prints. We have many free resources to help you get started on your learning journey. Subscribe to our gd and community using the link in the description below or visit our website. Test your knowledge with our gd and and print reading quizzes. Download helpful charts and access articles written by our training experts.